Good evening, nerd fam, and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here for our last segment on day one of three jam-packed days at Dell Tech World. The show is already buzzing. We've had some thrilling guests, and I am delighted to be joined by my co-host, Bob. Bob, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> doing very well, You're thanks. You're holding how up are you? well, day one. We're, we're doing good. You're bringing that energy. You brought me a Hershey bar tonight. That was so I, thoughtful. Oh. I did. I thought you might need a little something to You're keep so you going. You're so sweet. Little did you know I didn't what get a Hershey pepper bar. pot you were getting yourselves into. Very excited for our next segment. Continuing our conversation around partnerships tonight. We have a return guest, Todd Lieb, who's been <laughs> hanging out with us all night. We might as well make you an analyst at this point for the cube. Yeah, get rid of me. And, and we have the fabulous, ineffable, energy-filled, especially for this time of evening. Lisa Miller, the SVP of Alliances at Equinix. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you've got your Del Blue, you got your Searsucker, everyone's looking great. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, how's the day been for you? It has been awesome. Went to the Partner Summit. It oh, was, how was great. That, actually? I didn't get to stick my great. head in there. Yeah. Michael Dell came and spoke, had all of the senior leadership from Dell, showed a huge commitment to the partner community. I thought it was awesome. That is awesome. I love seeing so many executives involved in this show. In a way, not just on stage, but actually kind of getting to meet everybody. Todd, how's your day been? What, what was more fun, being on the show floor or hanging out with us here on the stage? Definitely hanging out with you guys <laughs> on the stage. Um, is that the right answer? I, I, okay, check that, thank you. Well, um, we might let you on a third time this week. Oh, if you keep up that kind of attitude. <laughs> I gotta check my schedule. What's now my mail, new so highlight? Checks in, the mail. Yeah. checks in the mail, there you go. No, it's, um, I, I love coming out here. Uh, not necessarily Las Vegas, but Las Vegas is fun. Um, but the show is awesome. So between spending time with partners, customers, um, meeting you wonderful people here on theCUBE. You're another, really hitting all the notes. That's correct. <laughs> Excellent work. Another we'll buy a martini. Don't another. worry, we're, we're yeah. good. So you're I'm good. Good. You're gonna throw that in. Um, no, it's, it's really good. It's like, it's six months of activity compressed into three days. So it can get a little exhausting, but it's all for the right, it's all for the right reasons. So it's good stuff. It, it is good stuff. Lisa, you've all had a lot of announcements recently. What's going on with the partnership? Give us the high level. Well, I just have to tell you, we've had a really long partnership with Dell. We've sold with Dell. We are a great landing space for Dell's uh, equipment. But what's exciting right now is our partnership, is we are launching Dell Power Store on Equinex Metal at Equinex Data Centers. So what does that mean? What does that add for your communities? So what that means is a customer can now get Power Store as a service, so cloud adjacent storage as a service for Dell equipment at Equinix. We manage it, customer controls it. It's beautiful. Sounds pretty seamless to me. Sounds like a lot of your partnerships. Yeah, this is special, right, Savannah? So the crayons and construction paper kind of story here. Break it down to me. Let's <laughs> give me, the, give me. Let's go. Let's close the laptops. Give back me what happens to with nursery the crayons. School. Yeah, let's go. Back to nursery school. I was the guy in the corner eating paste. All right. <laughs> I was, so, I was smelling glue. So, so yeah, we're, we're probably sitting next to each other. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we went off the rails there. So, <laughs> we were. Listen. We were sitting next to each other. Customers <laughs> need storage. See, see that transition? Yes. And now they just get it lit up, ready to go, on the data center floor, already connected to the clouds and to their cages. Yeah. In 30, 40, 50 countries. Which right, like out of the gates. Like, so, I don't know, that seems pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Giving everyone so that unified, global approach to how they have their storage, whether it be close to the cloud or close to one of their edge locations. I know one of the, the things I've always been impressed with with Equinix is the, the fact, I think, what's the stat? It's something like you have five milliseconds to 80% of the population of the countries that you're in. So, really impressive That's for organizations. really impressive, honestly. Well, yeah, and I think, especially when you're, when you're hearing, thinking about storage and, and with all the I'll just go ahead and say it now, AI stuff that's, that's going on, yeah. and the importance of having your data close and having it in a timely, right, having that reduced latency, shall we say, right, could be a really important play for organizations that need to be able to store data that want to do inferencing, but might not have a physical location that they can keep it in. So now you've got this ability to have a consistent storage infrastructure that can be deployed globally, right, and have very close proximity to their, to their end users or their, their environments. Absolutely, and you are looking at about one millisecond to all, all of the clouds. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
even better. That's, I mean, that's if, powerful. If you look at what we're doing with Dell Tech World today, or over the next couple of days, one of the biggest announcement categories, let's call it, is around Power Store and our mid-range products. Big hype, yeah. And Equinix in a great has, way. has like dug in right away for that to bring out to their customer base. So, customers are getting out of the data center business. They're going to the cloud. They want a cloud operating model. This is that, right? But think of it as step one. Right, so if you think about the other capabilities that are stacked right behind this, AI, hint, hint, right? So we're going to deliver, cough. Yeah. cough off, right? <laughs> so think about taking the AI, or the, the Equinix managed services. They manage, customer operates, but do that for power store. Then lay down an AI capability, lay down a data protection capability, and just snap that out into and across the data centers. Yeah. Yeah. It's clear you've been working together for a little while. <laughs> How long have you been working together, Todd? Yeah, so we were laughing about this earlier. So um, I asked you, but I forget, when did Equinix build their first data center? About 25 years ago. So we've been working together 25 years. <laughs> nice. Right? Well, because because <laughs> Dell literally. equipment has been being shipped to Equinix data centers since we started. Yeah. yeah. So it really has literally. been a partnership for 25 years, and we've continued to increase our partnership with selling together on strategic accounts. Now this is critical. Customers want to see their storage and their compute and their cloud capabilities right next to each other and we can deliver that um, as a service. It's really impressive. I mean, Dell having their 40th anniversary this month, also 30 years of power edge and you've been collaborating for 25? Yeah. That's you know, that's a college student's life of, <laughs> of <laughs> Dell and exactly. Equinix collaboration. That's exactly. really impressive. That's that's what you get here too, by the way. A little, little gray hair along the way, but that's all right. We better just keep, keep, better, we just better keep it going going gray and stay yep. than go away. All right. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Have you practiced I wasn't that say, before? Maybe once or twice. We, <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, Bob. I'm glad you did. Yeah. That, it was just the obvious. <laughs> Hitting the obvious tonight. Yeah, there's no shame. Outside of obviously getting to chat with a lot of your, your customers and community and, and talk more about your partnership, what are you most excited about this week? Lisa, I'll start with you. Well, I think when you look at Dell being the leader in uh, storage, we of course feel we're the global leader in data center and you'd be able to put that together. I think it's such a powerful message for us and where we can deliver it initially in over 30 countries um, and our goal is to continue to add metal locations and our great partnership with Dell, they tend to be everywhere we are. And so um, it allows for an exciting future for us because you heard about Dell's partner first strategy and as we get towards summer, you're going to hear some more exciting news where capabilities that we are talking about today may be delivered through their partners. So just more and more exciting things coming. So this is the beginning, and there's even more to come. Oh, I love a good little Was I a spoiler there or not? Uh, that, wasn't was a, that wasn't that a was spoiler. That was just a nice little just tease. Just, just a, a little enough of a drip. Just yeah. a drip. There we go. So think of ecosystem. We're here. Yeah. Little bullseye. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to go ring, ring, ring out and bring in the rest of the ecosystem to come play. Well, and as you think of Dell has been talking about how customers want to have their capability, their uh, services on-prem, and you also talk about the cloud. Well, we are that private network in the middle. So as customers want to grow and expand into new markets, they're not going to always go out and create a new office location. So that's where we fit in so well, where we can say, come to the private cloud. You've got the proximity to the clouds, but you have your compute, your storage, and this is how you can grow. And it's as a service, and it's almost instant on. And so it is really going to be impactful for customers. And, and it's also going to drive a lot of operational efficiencies, because it's the model totally. they're used to working with, what they maybe had on-prem, et cetera. So now it's just extending that, so regardless of where you want to deploy it in the globe, you're going to have that consistent, I, I like to refer to it as the principle of least astonishment. When you go to open it up, it doesn't look different, very familiar to you. You're able to, to complete all the functions and activities that you need to, to in a timely manner. 
Absolutely, and for us, as Todd said, the ecosystem that we have is one of the best things at Equinix. We have getting close to a half a million interconnections to all of the type of ecosystems you need to reach, regardless of the vertical. And so um, combine that with the power of storage for Dell. I think we're about to a mic drop. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I think you almost might have. Like, you're kind of teasing it. You're I, really I giving us quite the build up. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. All right, I want, okay, since you're giving us this really good foreshadow, and because you do touch across verticals, you both get to see a lot of different applications, different customer use cases, a lot of things. I understand there may be some secrets that you cannot reveal, but from a personal perspective, not even just from your partnership perspective, from a personal perspective, what gets you most excited about what happens next? In our AI future, it could be our globalized future, it could be anything, it could just be you. But as, as a technologist, as someone who sees everything, what's got you stoked? You want to go first? Sure. I can see you're deciding who has to go first. I'm letting you duel it so out. I, when I talk with customers, especially C-level or, or like VP-level IT leaders, they break their IT problems into two chunks. They got to figure out where to run work and they have to figure out where to store data. And all the action has been, mm -hmm. been around where am I going to run work? I'm going to pick this up, I'm going to move it here, I'm going to write code here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then the data was the problem. It's the anchor they're trying to drag along, and it's like, well, I moved everything there, but the data's still in my wherever, data center, colo, wherever it may be. And I, what I'm actually kind of interested in and what I'm excited about is, I think we're changing the rules there. I think we're kind of freeing up customers' ability to move data into new locations, mm -hmm. to put it close to the cloud but not in the cloud, to have it run in their cage, in Equinix Metal, inside a public cloud, and so the whole data story is going to kind of play out and data, as Michael I think would say on stage, is the fuel for AI. So now we're playing in that game as well. So if I had to say what I was excited about, that would be it. And I would say many of the same things because to me, it's all about where your data lives. And where your data lives is where your data needs to be stored. And I feel that this partnership is at the center of that, and that's really where I feel Equinex strength is because of the adjacency, and we want to be where data lives. Yep. Yeah. And not forcing people to bring their data somewhere it's not already, to your point. It was like we were talking about bringing the AI to your data and not the inverse, and yeah. I think that's really going to make a big difference in cost efficiency, in, in optimization of workflows, and, and generally just the human experience with a lot of these products that we have coming out there. Yeah. Yes, and a lot of people that have brought their data to the cloud is now saying, wait a minute, with AI, I may not want my data there, but I want it close. Right. right. So that cloud adjacency for data is so important, for that data storage, so important. And so that adjacency to have this storage solution between Dell and Equinix as a service with that adjacency of one millisecond or close to that, yeah. I think that's pretty special. How important is speed for your customers? Is what? Is speed, that one millisecond. We're talking about these numbers, and I think it matters to a lot of us when we're talking about inference and latency, but right. you're talking to everybody on the front lines. How, how much do those milliseconds make a difference? Well, it matters a lot because you when your you, business on it, we so build it our, we built our, <laughs> so we built our <laughs> business on it, so a lot of um, applications require five milliseconds or less mm -hmm. for point of sale. And so they have to be close to the edge of a network so that they can have that latency. And then when you think of all the cloud applications and how many times data sits one place, it has to go into the cloud, it has to come back, it has to go back and forth, that latency is critical. Yeah. And when we're moving mission critical applications from the cloud to an Equinix data center, that matters. Yeah. And so when our co competitors are not with that close proximity, it matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love that analogy and I think that's so important because you know, when you think about what 
the use cases are for so many of the enterprises, it's really about real-time insights. That's right. And so, in order to do that, you really need to minimize the amount of latency that you have so that you can, right, in, talking about retail. If you're trying to do some kind of location-based service and real-time offer management, it doesn't help that the person's walked 30 yards beyond what you're trying to right. get them to. They're not right. going to turn around and come back. If it's not right? real time, it's not real. Yeah, That's and then. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, same thing, you know, when you think about hospitals potentially leveraging this type of stuff, same type of thing, right? Hey, we need to find this cart, right? You don't need to find it two days from now, you need to find it right now, right? Because there's a real impact. So there's a lot of great use cases that really point to that fact of organizations need to do more real time analysis, and like you said, You've got the data, so when you were talking about, Todd, you're expanding, right, you can easily see, well, once you've got the data, and you want to maybe leverage that data to do some inferencing to get some real-time insights, there's a lot of great possibilities that could extend from what you're announcing today to where it could go in the future. Yeah. yeah. And Bob, you said something that just triggered a thought. You said enterprise. And Lisa and I were talking earlier, Equinix has a specialty or a concentration in large enterprise customers that need large cabinets and colos and cages, and Dell works with the largest customers in the world and has a business that kind of goes all the way down to you and I buying something for my parents, right? You know, that kind of thing. And so, what we're doing with some of these services is also opening up enterprise class capabilities to customers of all shapes and sizes. So you don't have to be that huge enterprise that has to buy this square mm -hmm. footage and make commitments. You can yeah. come in and acquire a service to get started, but have enterprise class capabilities with it, including the AI support, that's kind of fun. Like that's it's really interesting. It's to be able to step up and into it too without you can. having to. But you can. Right. You in, can. in fact, we are able to deliver a very low entry point right. for being able to provide this storage where you don't have to have a significant commitment, which also makes this an awesome offer. Yeah, you're ordering it through an Equinix portal. You're, you don't need the skill set to run it because Equinix is doing that. Yeah. You can just operate and use it. Um, and then not only do you do that, but you could say, okay, we talked about this use case. I operate in London and Amsterdam and Ashburn. But I want to try and experiment in 15 markets, Brazil, India, Malaysia, et cetera, mm -hmm. see what happens. And all of a sudden, a couple of those markets really start to take off, so you acquire space, you build out what you need, and other ones you may shrink, you may expand, but you have the ability to kind of go and experiment and do things that you couldn't do before, which is kind of, kind of cool. Yeah. And the other interesting part, some of those places you mentioned are somewhat power constrained. So they may not even be able to deploy infrastructure there, they're going That's to right. have to use an outside infrastructure like an Equinix. Well, and the beauty is, if a customer finds that a location is growing like crazy, they might add a facility there. And then they can still have their capability on-prem. So the blend of now this flexibility that it gives you, just doesn't matter if you're providing the services for a customer for Dell on-prem or in the cloud, now you have all of this flexibility of an as-a-service in all of these edge locations. And while this is available in 30 markets, we have over 260 data centers. So that gives us a lot of growth. That's some range, potential. Yeah, you got some range. Growth right. potential there. I love and that. So a lot of growth potential um, to get to all those 75 metro markets in over 33 countries. All right, last question, because you are our last interview of the evening, and we mentioned martinis earlier. Uh-oh. Lightning round, what is your favorite Vegas meal and beverage? Todd, starting with you. So I would go uh, sushi. I know it's a little generic, it's just my favorite meal in general. That's okay, do you have a favorite and sushi spot in Vegas? Um, like a Nobu guy? I'm a Nobu guy. Yeah, you're a Nobu I guy, yeah. Nobu. I, I could see it on your face and you almost don't want to say it. Just say yeah, it. Yeah, I can go it's Nobu. Okay. Nobu. <laughs> and then when there's some version of a tasty sake, just going with mm -hmm. the sushi. So, I, um, I know what Lisa orders, <laughs> which is a little disturbing. That, that means a really go, good partnership. <laughs> <laughs> really good I partnership think. when I know really exactly good. what she drinks and it's very specific. Go ahead. Lemon drop martini. With? With sugar rim. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, you even know down to that detail. Yes, with the sugar. I love rim. that. That is That's a, a partner caring shit. partner. That's, a partner That's it. Yeah. That's it. Focus on the important stuff. <laughs> and I would say I love the steak choices that you have. Oh, so, so many, many. amazing steakhouses in Las Vegas. I don't know if I have a favorite. 
No, they are all pretty They are phenomenal. all darn good. Yes. And I'm from the Midwest, so, you know, Nebraska, so you know Iowa good, beef. A good steak. Good yeah. steak. You know good and steak. so there are so many great steakhouses here. So. Awesome. Now I want a steak. Bob, do you have anything you're looking forward to eating? No, my favorite meal is usually my next one, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Todd, Lisa, it's really been a pleasure. Thank you for closing this out the best possible way we could have. Bob, what a treat to share the desk with you tonight. Thank you. You know, we were joking in the beginning about having some jazz hands, so I'm going to ask all of us to close with our jazz hands. Jazz Thank hands. all of you for tuning in live to our three days of coverage hands. here at Dell Tech World in a beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.